In this course, we will cover the Computer System Fundamentals web-based training. The computer system is one of the most important systems on a vehicle. The computer is used to control various vehicle functions that include, but are not limited to, cruise control, lighting circuits, ignition systems, emission systems, climate control, anti-lock braking, electronic suspension systems, and fuel delivery systems. This course will provide you with an awareness of how computers function and how they are used in vehicle applications. Upon completion of this course, you will be able to recall computer control system operation, module communication operation, modes of computer operation, and diagnostic strategies for automotive applications. This lesson introduces the basic theory and operation of vehicle computers and how computers are used to control various functions in the vehicle. Computers are vital to today's automotive industry and are responsible for many advances in automotive technology. Technicians must have an understanding of vehicle computers in order to properly diagnose and troubleshoot modern vehicles. A computer is an electronic device that can perform complex and repetitive procedures accurately and quickly. It can store and retrieve large amounts of data in a matter of seconds. The computer has four major functions, which are receiving inputs, processing information, storing information, and processing outputs. We will review these in detail later on in the course. Computers also have the capability to network with multiple computers located in the vehicle. Computers contain a central processing unit. It is abbreviated as CPU and is also known as a microprocessor. It is the brain of the computer. Today's vehicles may have 50 or more microprocessors. Microprocessors help to simplify the vehicle design and manufacturing process. Microprocessors make it easier for the automotive technician to service the vehicle. Microprocessors are used on many automotive features, including advanced diagnostics, engine controls to meet emissions and fuel economy standards, safety, comfort, and convenience. This activity highlights just a few control modules that have been designed due to the advancements made by the automotive industry. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select Next to continue. The Engine Control Module, or ECM, controls engine functions such as fuel delivery, engine cooling, and ignition. The airbag module controls deployment of the vehicle's airbags. The body controller controls components such as the door locks, interior lights, power windows, and adjustable seats. The driver's door module relays commands from switches located on the driver's door directly to the body controller. The cruise control module regulates vehicle speed requested by the driver while in cruise control mode. The instrument panel control module controls the gauges and indicator lights using data from the communication bus. The climate control module monitors the vehicle's interior temperature and controls the heating and cooling systems. The anti-lock brake system, or ABS, module controls the anti-lock brakes and may also control the traction control and stability control systems. The transmission controller controls the automatic transmission operation. 
The power distribution module controls relays in the power distribution such as the horn relay and the fog light relay. The distinction between software and hardware can be confusing. Software means instructions that tell the computer how to function. Hardware refers to the equipment used by the software. A service manual could be called software because it contains instructions. The tools you use to fix a vehicle, wrenches, diagnostic equipment, etc., could be called hardware. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select Next to continue. Computer software is the program that enables the computer to perform a specific task which can consist of computer instructions or data. Software can be divided into two categories, which are system and application software. System software can include the operating system and the utilities that enable the computer to function. Application software includes programs that do work for the driver, such as regulate wiper speed on automatic wiper systems, allow the vehicle to idle, and honk the horn when requested by the driver. Computer hardware includes the physical components of a system, such as memory storage devices, microprocessors, and the control module housings. A vehicle's computer memory holds programs and other data which the CPU refers to when performing applications. The CPU follows a set of instructions or programs which tells the CPU when to retrieve an input, how to process the input, and what to do with the input information once it is processed. The CPU works with memory in two ways. It can read information stored in memory or change the information stored in memory by writing in or storing new information. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select Next to continue. Random access memory, or RAM, may also be known as primary storage or read and write memory. The CPU can access RAM data randomly. Temporary information that is read from or written by the CPU is stored as RAM. RAM is considered volatile memory because a steady flow of electricity is needed to maintain its contents. Once power is removed from the system, the data stored in RAM is lost. Read-only memory, or ROM, is data that is read-only. It cannot be removed or changed. ROM is considered non-volatile memory because its contents are retained when power is removed from the system. Electronically erasable programmable read-only memory, or EEPROM, contains specific information for the exact vehicle in which the computer is installed. Sometimes known as flash memory, it retains information when the power is removed from the system. EEPROM can only be erased by exposing it to an electrical charge to allow new data to be installed. Computer operation has four stages. Input, processing, storage, and output. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select Next to continue. An input is a signal received by the computer from an input device. An input device can be a button or switch on an instrument panel or a sensor on a vehicle's engine. A vehicle can use various electrical, mechanical, and magnetic sensors to measure engine RPM, vehicle speed, tire air pressure, air temperature, engine coolant temperature, and the oxygen content of exhaust gas. Most input sensors provide analog signals, such as the throttle position sensor, which sends a variable voltage signal to the computer. Other inputs send digital signals, such as the crankshaft position sensor, which sends an on-off signal. The computer monitors input signals and compares them to programmed parameters in order to determine the value of the signal from the input.
The computer is then able to process and provide the correct output signals to the actuators. Actuators are devices that perform the actual work requested by the computer. A computer's programmed instructions are stored in electronic memory. Additionally, input data can be stored for later reference or future processing. Output commands may also be delayed or stored before they are transmitted to devices in other parts of the system. After the sensor signal information has been processed, output commands are sent to various output devices such as an instrument panel display or throttle actuator. The output of one computer can also be the input to another computer. Automotive control modules come in a variety of configurations. In the following pages, we will discuss the differences between two types of configurations, which are standalone and multiple control module systems. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select Next to continue. Standalone module control systems were used in vehicles produced before 1995. Standalone modules receive inputs directly from sensors and send outputs directly to the control devices. There was no communication or sharing of information with other modules within the vehicle. Multiple control module systems are used in vehicles produced after 1995. Multiple control modules receive information from various control modules and send processed information to the control devices. In this system, one control module is used as the central hub of communication. This hub receives information from the control modules and redirects the information to the corresponding control module or modules to carry out the function or functions requested. An example of this would be the engine control module which uses inputs from various sensors to control the air-fuel mixture in the engine. The automotive industry has used module control systems and vehicles to control most electrical component operations since the 1980s. A vehicle may have 10 or more modules that communicate with each other over data lines or hardwiring depending on the application. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select Next to continue. Voltage signals are used to activate or deactivate a control module or group of control modules. Voltage signals can range from 0 to 12 volts. Depending on the manufacturer, either voltage could indicate that the module is awake or asleep. Serial data is information that is transmitted by a series of rapidly changing voltage signals pulsed from low to high or from high to low. When most control modules are connected together, they form a network. In a network, the number of wires that are needed is decreased, which saves on cost, weight, and a reduction in factory installation time. This makes servicing the vehicle easier for the technician. Another advantage is that common sensor data can be shared with control modules that may need specific information such as vehicle speed, engine coolant temperature, and outside air temperature. The serial data stream is information sent over data communication lines such as UART, CAN bus, LIN bus, and most bus to other control modules or to the diagnostic port. The Society of Automotive Engineers, SAE, has developed three categories for in-vehicle networks. Class A serial data is a low-speed communication network that is used on most convenience systems such as the audio system. Class B serial data is a medium-speed communication network that is used in the instrumentation system. Class C serial data is a high-speed communication network that is used in airbag systems to provide real-time data. 
failsafe is a data signal type that is communicated over the data stream to ensure the control module functions in a safe manner. An example of failsafe data is when the vehicle starts experiencing a charging system failure and the central hub receives a message that the voltage is going low. At this point, the central hub sends out a message telling vital control modules to function in a safe manner. It also sends a signal telling non-vital modules to turn off in order to reduce power consumption. A vehicle's control module system can have different modes of operation depending on the overall operation of the vehicle. On the following pages, we will discuss the different modes of operation and the conditions needed for the control module to operate in these modes. Select each button to learn more. When finished, select Next to continue. Off asleep mode occurs when the vehicle is turned off and no signals are being sent from other control modules. A control module will be in off asleep mode when the key is removed from the ignition and the anti-theft device is activated or when a signal is sent to the communication hub giving the control modules the clearance to completely turn off. On asleep mode occurs when a message has been sent from another control module prompting it to prepare to turn on in order to perform different functions. A module will be in on asleep mode with the key in the accessory position or when a signal is sent through the communication hub for the system to prepare to be active. On awake mode occurs when a control module is completely ready to receive inputs and sends outputs to control devices or perform functions. A module will be in on awake mode when the key is in the run position or a signal is sent to the communication hub to completely activate all control module systems. Safe mode occurs when vital control modules are in default mode because of a failure. A module will be in safe mode with the key in the run position or a low or no voltage signal is sent to the communication hub. If the hub sends a signal to activate the safe mode, vital control modules will enter safe mode. A diagnostic strategy is a way to diagnose concerns with the serial data bus or the control module itself. There are six basic steps in a diagnostic strategy. Verify the concern, perform preliminary inspection, check for faults, identify the issue, repair the issue, and perform the quality check to verify the issue is resolved. This activity will walk you through the steps for performing a diagnostic strategy. Select each tab for more information. When finished, select Next to continue. In order to verify a vehicle concern, you must find out the customer's concern by asking questions. You should also try to duplicate the concern by test driving the vehicle. To perform a preliminary inspection, you should visually inspect the system or components that may be causing the concern. After performing the visual inspection, you must perform functionality tests on the suspected system or components. A diagnostic scan tool can be used to check for system faults. If faults are found, you can use the proper service information to continue diagnosing the concern. Identify the concern by reviewing the results from the visual and diagnostic system checks. Once the test results are reviewed, you must check for vehicle service bulletins in the event that there are possible advisories issued by the vehicle's manufacturer. In any event, 
if there is an advisory or not, you must always rely on the vehicle's service information for repair or replacement procedures. Once the issue has been isolated, the component or components must be repaired or replaced according to the vehicle's service information. Perform a quality check by conducting a visual inspection of the initial concern and test drive the vehicle to ensure that the concern has been resolved. Control modules have built-in self-diagnostic programs. This means they can perform diagnostic system checks of themselves and other control modules. At initial startup, a control module sends out a signal and makes sure the other control modules respond correctly with a message that says they are in good working order. This activity will walk you through the steps for performing a functionality test of the engine control module or ECM. Please note that this procedure may vary depending on the type of equipment being used. Select the corners of the book to progress to the next or previous pages. This activity will walk you through the steps for performing a functionality test of the ABS control module. Please note that this procedure may vary depending on the type of equipment being used. Select the corners of the book to progress to the next or previous pages. Congratulations, you have successfully completed the Computer System Fundamentals course. In this course, you have learned to recall computer control system operation, module communication operation, modes of computer operation, and diagnostic strategies for automotive applications.